What exactly is the BMAT? The BMAT is the Biomedical Admissions Test, and as its name suggests, it's an admissions test used by some universities as part of the application process for courses in medicine, graduate medicine, dentistry, and biomedical sciences. As of June 2017, these are the main courses and universities in the UK which require this test, but this list can change from year to year, and the test is also required for some international universities, as well as some foundation courses, so make sure you check whether the universities and courses you're considering require the BMAT before you apply. This information can usually be found on the particular university's website alongside their other entry requirements or on the BMAT website itself. What's the test actually like? It has three sections, each testing different skills. These sections are aptitude and skills, scientific knowledge and applications, and the writing task. Let's take a closer look at each section. Section 1, aptitude and skills, consists of 35 multiple choice questions to answer in one hour. That gives you slightly over a minute and a half per question, which really isn't much time at all, so you'll have to work quickly. This section tests problem solving, understanding arguments, and data analysis as well as making inferences from data. Here's an example question from the 2015 BMAP paper. In this question, you're asked to read a short passage and choose the statement which could be drawn as a conclusion from this passage. I'm going to give you a moment to pause this video and read it through. Done? Here we go! In this case, the answer could only be A, as none of the other statements could be drawn as conclusions on the passage. If you didn't get this one, it's best to practice since these questions aim to test your thinking skills. There are several other types of questions which come up in section 1, so it's definitely worth doing a few past papers, which are all available for free on the BMAT website. Moving on to section 2, Scientific Knowledge and Applications. It's another multiple choice paper, with 27 questions to complete in half an hour, so that's roughly a minute per question, which is even less time than you get for section 1. This section tests your ability to apply GCSE level science and maths, so it's not enough to just be able to remember facts. You need to be able to apply your knowledge to solve problems. Here's an example question from the 2015 BMAP paper. In this question, you have to figure out the phenotypes of five flies based on their genotypes. You probably know from GCSE that in humans, Two X chromosomes make a female, and an X and a Y make a male. Now you've been given some new information. In fruit flies, it's the ratio of X to A chromosomes which determine their sex. Their Y chromosome merely determines whether the fly can make sperm. Since the question is asking for the sex of each fly, this line is the one we need to pay attention to. This line about the Y chromosome is a red herring. The Y chromosome does not determine sex. So if we ignore all the Y chromosomes in the fly's genotypes, and just look at the ratios of X chromosomes to A chromosomes, the question becomes much easier to answer. The first is male, the second is also male, and the rest are female. So the answer is G. Again, there will be other types of questions in this section, for example to test chemistry, physics, and maths, so do have a look at past papers on the BMAT website. Finally, we have section 3, the writing task. Here, you have half an hour to answer one question from a choice of three. This is a recent change. Before 2017, there was a choice of four. This section tests your writing skills, your ability to select, develop, and organize ideas, and communicate them effectively through good written English. Here's an example question from the 2015 BMAP paper, which has four questions listed as it's the old test format. As you can see, out of the four questions, there was one which is general, one scientific, one medical, and one veterinary. Not always in that order. From 2017 onwards, there will only be three questions offered, general, medical, and scientific. You're free to answer whichever one you like, so even if you're applying for medicine, you are under no obligation to answer the medical question. You will only be given one answer sheet, so there is both a time constraint and a space constraint on how much you can write. Now let's have a look at how the BMAT is scored. Each section of the BMAT is scored separately, so your final score will be in three parts. For sections 1 and 2, the multiple choice questions, your raw marks are converted to the BMAT scale, so your final score for each section will be given out of 9. Generally speaking, a 5 is average and corresponds to about half the raw marks, a 6 is very good, and a 7 or above is downright exceptional, although how this affects your application will often depend on how well everyone else did. For section 3, your score will be made up of a numerical score, ranging from 0 to 5 depending on the quality of the content of your essay and a letter grade from A to E for the fluency and quality of a written English. 
One thing to bear in mind is that some universities assign different weightings to different sections of the BMAT. For example, for the Oxford Biomedical Sciences course, sections 1 and 2 are weighted twice as heavily as the essay section. Also, it might be useful to know how your BMAT score will be used in the application, and this often depends on the university in question. Some might use it to select candidates for interview, while others might use it to decide which candidates get offers. Some look very heavily at the BMAT, while others consider it as just one aspect of your whole application. Now let's have a look at some key dates. These dates are for the usual November sitting of the BMAT, and are correct for the 2017 BMAT. So make sure you double-check these dates if you're taking it in a different application cycle. On the 1st of September, you can start to register for the BMAT. This will usually be done through your school, and it is vitally important that you register for the BMAT yourself, as your school cannot register for you, and your university application is very likely to be binned if you don't sit the BMAT. The deadline for registration is the 1st of October, although late registrations will be accepted until the 15th of October. You must take the BMAT in the same year that you apply to the university. BMAT results are only valid for that application cycle and can't be carried forward to future years if you apply again later. On the 2nd of November, you sit the BMAT. This will probably be at your school. Then on the 24th of November, BMAT results will be released and sent directly to the universities you apply to which require the BMAT. You will have put this down in your registration form. You will also be able to check your results online, and details about how to do this will be given to you when you sit the test. If you'd like to query your results, the deadline for this is the 1st of December. Check the BMAT website for more information on how to do this. For the 2017 application cycle, a September sitting of the BMAT will be available to students applying to certain universities for courses starting in 2018. Not all universities will accept the September BMAT, so make sure you check the BMAT website. Here are the key dates for the September 2017 BMAT. On the 3rd of July, you can start to register for the September BMAT. You won't be able to do this through your school and must do it yourself online on the BMAT website. The deadline for registering is the 18th of August, and late registrations will not be accepted. At this stage, you'll have the choice to select the universities which will be sent your BMAT results, but it's probably a better idea to wait until you've seen your results and confirmed your UCAS choices. On the 9th of September, you'll sit the BMAT, and on the 29th of September, your results will be released to you online. You'll be able to share your results with universities until the 20th of October, and this will also be via the BMAT website. It's very important to be aware that not all universities will accept the September sitting of the BMAT. For example, the University of Oxford will only accept the November BMAT for its Medicine and Biomedical Sciences courses. Additionally, you can only sit the BMAT once per admission cycle, which means either in September or in November of that year, but not both. Now let's get on to how to actually prepare for the BMAT. It's important to be aware that the BMAT is designed to test raw ability, so that you can't really prepare for it aside from practicing on past papers to get used to the style of the test and the types of questions. The assumed level of knowledge is GCSE level biology, chemistry, physics, and maths, so do brush up on these if you haven't done them in a while. So here are some pointers on how to prepare for the test. The most important thing is to practice. One of the trickiest aspects of the BMAT is timing, because you really haven't got much time at all to complete each question, so definitely practice under timed conditions. Past papers are available for free on the BMAT website. On a related note, start preparing early, because you're practicing skills and getting used to the style of the questions. The BMAT isn't something you can cram for. It would also be a good idea to go over your GCSE science and maths, especially if you haven't done one of these subjects in a while. For details of the assumed level of knowledge and what you're expected to know, there is a test specification available on the BMAT website. And finally, right after you've taken the BMAT, jot down a few notes on what you put down for the writing task. The universities you apply to will be sent a scanned copy of your essay, so they just might ask you about it at interview. So hopefully that covers everything you need to know about the BMAT. Good luck!